That Kilo case is. Uh, it played a huge role in me getting involved in politics in the first place. I started yeah. fighting against eminent domain and tax increment financing. We just celebrated the five year anniversary of Kilo. Suzette Kilo and, and her property that was taken yep. away. Do you know the land is still empty? The, they, they took the <laughs> land away from her in her little pink house. It's a fabulous yep. book, The Little yep. Pink House. Yep. The Institute for Justice mm -hmm. wrote up, they did a tremendous job on it, even though they lost. They never should have lost. What worries me when you look at the U.S. Supreme Court is these 5-4 rulings, where they take away more and more and more of our rights, and now we find out the same thing's happening here in Minnesota. Well, and the other thing that's important about this, Sue, is that we have a president right now who is appointing very liberal judges to our U.S. Supreme Court and to our courts of appeals. What I've been telling people is, is that if that occurs, we're going to end up with our federal constitutional rights being watered down. And what people need to realize is that we have a provision in the law that your state constitutions can provide more rights, expanded rights, than are found in the federal constitution. So if, if the federal constitution gets watered down, the state constitutions are going to become the bulk work of our rights. And we need to really have judges who understand how important those rights are and to support those constitutions. I, you have just made a tremendously important point of how important our, our state's rights are going to become. Yeah. Because every one of these rulings, whether you're talking about the gun ban, the Chicago gun ban, or the Heller case in Washington, D.C., you're talking about Kelo, these are 5-4 rulings. Yep. This is so scary, and we need our state's, our state's rights. We need judges in Minnesota who are going to uphold the rights of we the people. So... What about Obamacare? Now, now let, let me set the stage here for, for the viewers. Yeah. Uh, Obamacare was rammed down our throat by the federal government. You already have maybe 20 states who are suing the federal government, saying they've overstepped their authority and, and are not Minnesota. Where's Minnesota? Nowhere to be found in this issue. How are the judges going to uphold this? Well, again, it's going to end up right now, it, it's ending, going to end up in the federal courts, not the state courts. True. But, you know, if you look at, I think it's an absolute attack on the liberty interests that are in our Constitution. The, the idea that they're going to force people to buy insurance is just insane. Uh, and, again, we need, to, we need to start to stem this. But the problem is, is that this kind of logic has been going on in our courts incrementally for years and years and years and years. And now we're finally getting to the point where they're trying to tell us, you know, you have to buy insurance at a certain place. That's why we have to, it's gonna be an incremental movement back most likely, but if we don't get control of our courts, we'll never make that move. Right, so House File 1, the deal that the legislature and the governor put together to end this year's legislative session where yep. instead of being fiscally responsible like they should have been, they kicked the can down the road. House File 1 puts Obamacare on the books, and that's my terminology there, Obamacare on the books for the state of Minnesota. And that will require, to get rid of that, that will require a state lawsuit, correct? Uh, and our Minnesota judges uh, what, what will you're have saying, to handle it. What you're it. saying is, is we're creating Obamacare on the state level. Correct. Yes, and if, and people should be suing like crazy. I think if if that actually uh, t it takes effect, uh, it's an absolute attack on liberty interests, uh, and I think uh, it, it it it's absolutely unconstitutional. But Sue, the second I tell you that, the state supreme court requires that I also tell you that I maintain an open mind. Oh. Because that's that's right. one of their rules. That's one of their rules that if I state my view on a legal or political issue, I also have to tell you I maintain an open mind. And but that's why we heard the Supreme Court Justice Kagan come out and say she she kept an open mind. I thought her, it was because we we knew her brain would <laughs> fall out, but that's a whole nother. <laughs> but but again, that's why we look at we have judges who are making policy. We're never going to get away from that entirely, I don't think, but. If we're going to have judges who make policy, then we want to have judges who are conservatives and are making conservative policy. Part of conservative policy is to know when you should stay out, when you should say something is a political issue that belongs to the legislature and to the governor 
and executive branch and that the judges should stay out. Right now, that break is gone. The judges feel that they can get involved in anything and everything. And they do. Yeah, they absolutely do, including funding, including telling the state to spend money. Recent example I can give you would be uh, the un uh, not the unallot well the unallotment case is an example and of of judicial activism where my opponent Helen Meyer provided the uh, crucial fourth vote the deciding vote that got involved in how the f money is going to be spent by the uh, by by the state and I, you know I look at that case and I just say why are the judges involved at all they should be saying this is an issue that should be decided by the legislature and the governor and they should stay out. And then that was an interesting ruling too because they didn't rule that Governor Pawlenty did anything wrong, they just said the timing was off. Well, except, Sue, it's, it's a little bit more worse than that because the timing thing isn't found in the uh, explicit language of the statute. Right. What they did is they created a new requirement that isn't found in the language of the statute, then said that the governor didn't meet the requirement, and then ruled against the governor. If you, it's a clear case of judicial activism. I, there's no other way to look at it. And it's this kind of activity that we need to stop. And then, ironically, the legislature came back in and did almost exactly what Governor Pawlenty had done in unallotment. <laughs> yes, so we wasted exactly. our time, our effort, and our money to do exactly the same thing again. Uh, and, but, but we've got a court. The court is showing us it's where it's at now. The court has said, if you give us a, a political issue, if you give us an issue that deals with how to spend money, we'll, we'll gladly jump into the fray. Well, that's not what our judges are supposed to do. They need to butt out. We need to get back to constitutional government. And that is something a lot of our judges do not understand. No, I agree 100%. I'm sure the viewers do too. So why should the viewers vote for you? Well, to start with Sue. <laughs> you understand the I, Constitution. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I like to believe I understand the Constitution. But it's more than that. I, I think uh, what I'm telling people is, is I believe in their right to vote. I believe in their right to hold judges accountable. My opponent doesn't. And if I am elected and someday you're unhappy with what I'm doing, you'll be able to vote me out of office. And I think that's a great thing. If, if my opponent gets her way, all the judges are going to be appointed and we're going to end up suffering no matter how bad these judges are. Mm -hmm. So that's why. I tell, Sue, I tell people one other thing is, look, it, you don't have to remember my name when you go to vote. All you have to remember is that on that judicial ballot, when you flip it over, there's that word incumbent. Just vote against the incumbent. I do that all <laughs> the time, too. I see the word incumbent, I'm like, absolutely not. So I'm in that 45%, and we're going to turn that around this right. time. Because ho however judicial appointments are not uh, considered partisan, I will just never, ever, ever understand that. Oh, they're absolutely partisan. Of course they are. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. Um, the person that you're running again, how long has she been on the bench? She was appointed by Jesse Ventura. Um, long I'm enough. <laughs> long enough, exactly. <laughs> long enough to make bad decisions. Yes. And, and, and again, at some point in time, we have to be able to hold people accountable they keep making bad decisions. It's time to, you know, just throw them out, get some new judges in there, and like I said, restore constitutional government. And we have some fabulous judicial candidates uh, running. I, that's why I'm so excited about it, uh, because we can turn this around. Uh, so how would people find out more information about you? Well, they could go to my website, which is wurzelforjustice.com. WurzelforJustice.com. Yep, Wurzel is W-E-R-S-A-L. Okay. And uh, there's a YouTube, there is uh, Twitter, uh, all that stuff is out there. Uh, I've got different people on the campaign who do each of those things. Uh, so they, they, they'll find me if they... Good, I'm a new Twitter <laughs> fanatic, so I'm going to go follow you when okay. I get home okay. because I love new technology. I think, you know, anything that helps me learn more, I think, is terrific. But um, is it Facebook, too? 
Facebook too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> website. <laughs> the, uh, again, the website's worselforjustice.com. Worselforjustice. And justice. it's got a lot of information there. It talks a lot about uh, the lawsuit that we pursued uh, uh, to get up to the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, as well as some current litigation we've got going on because we're, for instance, attacking the word incumbent on the ballot and trying to get that uh, Tell declared Tell us about that. That should be uh, unconstitutional. How, yeah. can that, how can that be? Well, the problem is, is again, the issue when it was first raised uh, has been raised and brought to the Minnesota Supreme Court. Uh, <laughs> and again, I mean, I mean it's like, it's like uh, the fox in the hen house, right? These, the judges don't want these, this election system to work. Uh, they don't think there's anything wrong with the word incumbent. Well, you know, you know and I know that that gives the incumbent a huge advantage. So we've now raised uh, a separate lawsuit in federal court. Uh, it's before the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, I, I kind of doubt that we're going to get a decision before the end of this election cycle. Mm -hmm. But again, this is a process where you keep fighting and fighting and fighting. And we've made big, like I said, we've made some huge strides. Uh, the judges are to the point where they're afraid somebody could win. And that's why, despite the fact that we've had elections for, uh, what, 150 years, uh, suddenly that's no good anymore. Suddenly they, we need to go to an appointment system. We're going to make sure justices <laughs> win because they're elected, not because they're appointed. Nobody yeah. should ever give up their right to vote for judges. It, it, it's just beyond me that we've actually gotten that far. Um, we're getting down to our last few minutes here. What is it you want people to remember about you, your message, and why they should vote for you? Oh, Sue, I, you know, um, I'd ask that they, they go to the website, they educate themselves. Uh, I'd ask that they, they realize that there really are people out there who want to take away their right to vote. Uh, they're called judges and they're called the incumbents. Um, and then I'd ask everybody, uh, just go to their email and go to their contact list and send out an email to all the people on their contact list and, and say, look it, there's a guy out there named Greg Wurzel who supports your right to vote. The incumbents want to take away your right to vote. This isn't even a partisan issue, Sue. I don't care whether you're Republican or Democrat or your Green Party. Everybody wants their right to vote. Everybody wants the opportunity to hold judges accountable. And that's, the, that's my message. Let's just hold judges accountable. Right now, they're doing a crummy job. We need to kick some of them out of office. Definitely time to throw them out of office. Uh, Worsel for Judge. Worsel for Justice. Worselforjustice.com. Am I right? Yep. Okay. I'm going to sign up to follow you on Twitter and Facebook. All right. Um, I'm pretty sure there are more than 20 people watching. Just saying, with that new rule, oh. go to the website. <laughs> okay. And they, with the web, <laughs> yes, exactly. So I understand. Yes. Look at, they, yes, if they wish, they can, they can uh, there's PayPal. They can contribute right there on the website. Uh, or they can, it gives them an address where they could mail a check if they wish to do it that way. And the most important thing, I think, is to send it out to their email contacts because it is so important that we spread the word about how important judicial elections are and that we ha have a candidate who will actually step up and look out for us. Well, and not only that, Sue, is that it, it wouldn't take very much to change the outcome of these elections. We, we only need to move a small part of the, the, the populace to realizing what's going on. And that's why uh, sending out those emails is so critical. The average person has zero information on judicial elections, zero. So if the viewers today can provide just a little bit of information to their friends, it's gonna be more information than they've ever had in their entire life. And that really can make the difference. All right. Never, ever give up your right <laughs> to vote. Sue, Best of luck, Craig Worsall. Sue, I really appreciate it. You're having me on.